Today could prove to be the most important day in the history of the world for the silver price and gold price. I'll explain why in this video, but we got a lot more to talk about. We're gonna talk about Bidenomics. We're gonna talk Turkey and something very interesting that has everything to do with the silver that you may or may not own. Maybe you lost it in a boating accident. Whatever the case may be, we're gonna talk about something very, very fascinating regarding silver price, and the country of Turkey, and how you could be a Turkey too, and a very happy Turkey, if indeed what happens in Turkey happens to you, you big Turkey. All right, enough Turkey talk. Uh, we're going to talk about the U.S. economy. <clears throat> we're going to talk about $34 trillion in debt, Saudi Arabia, China, some big news about China that you're not going to hear on uh on CNN, the Children's News Network, or MSBS, or uh, what's the other one? Fox News, any of them, okay, for that matter. Big news about China, okay? And we're going to talk about crazy. Jim Rickards came out with some predictions for 2024. If you don't know who Jim Rickards is, uh, he is this guy who studies the precious metals markets, world geopolitical. He's very, very smart. I believe even worked with like some of the big government agencies back in the day. So he has an insider and he's got some crazy things to say, but let's get crazy first. Happy. Uh, it's okay for us to be happy and rejoice because before I came on, I checked the gold price up about 14, 13, 12. At one point, Susie yelled at me from upstairs. She didn't yell, Ronnie, do you need more coffee? No, she yelled, the silver price is up. Oh my God, super chats are coming in. Thank you, Alvin. Wow. Thank you, Alvin, for the super chat. Metal Seer, thank you. Never expected, always appreciated, but Susie's yelling at me from the upstairs that gold was up $17 at one point. Guys, we had a major event occur today. I'm not joking. This really could be, in terms of our lifetimes, the biggest day for the silver price and the gold price. And I'll tell you why, because we got the big numbers, okay? From the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Now, we don't call it this, but apparently I've heard this from some insiders that on Wall Street, they refer to the BLS, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, as the Bureau of Lies and Statistics. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay. But nonetheless, they came out with their December jobs numbers. How many jobs did Joe Biden and his economic miracle create during the month of December? And it blew away expectations. They were expecting about 170,000 jobs. And lo and behold, the economy created over 215, 216 to be exact, jobs in December. Blew away expectations. That, now remember this, very important for you basement dweller to remember, that is bad news, bad, bad news for the gold price and the silver price because that means the economy's strong. That means the Fed won't raise rates, right? So, so what happened, all right? Something very, very major happened and we're gonna talk about that. But first, let's dig into the numbers just a little bit deeper. The employment rate was 3.7, unemployment rate was 3.7%, was expected to be 3.8%. So that beat as well, 36 straight months. I tell you what, that President Biden, he is just incredible. Like he always likes to say, Bidenomics, it's working, it's working. Yes, Joe, it's working great. It's wonderful. So apparently a lot of people got third, fourth. Maybe some people have fifth jobs now. Who knows? But nonetheless, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the economy's humming along on all cylinders. We got nothing to worry about. Life is good in America. For some reason, the middle class is shrinking, but nonetheless... Jobs are great, okay? Let's let's just poke a little fun. Let's have a little fun with these numbers while we are while while we can, okay? I'll just read you this from Zero Hedge, because they do this every month. Don't be a sucker. Basement dwellers, 
We aren't suckers, okay? We don't know. We, we don't claim we can predict the future. We certainly don't claim that we could put together these advanced statistics like jobs numbers for a month of December, but let's have a little fun with their numbers and let's, let's, let's see how they're actually full of it and, and, and not accurate and not, um, we don't believe them, okay? Because let's, I'll read you this, then we'll talk about this a little more. This is from Zero Hedge. It says, that said, we are comfortable with predicting that next month, that next month, today's print, meaning the number they put out today, wow, thank you for that super chat, my friend. Wow, man. oh, James, thank you. I super appreciated, okay? Uh, never expected. You guys are blowing me away. So what, what Zero Hedge says here is we're comfortable with predicting that next month, today's print, right, the 216,000 job will be revised sharply lower, perhaps even below 175,000, which was the other expected number, meaning that today's number was actually a miss. Why would we say that? Okay, because once again, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics revised not just one, but both previous month numbers lower. Okay, October was revised down 45,000 jobs from 150 all the way to 105. So remember when they reported October's numbers two, two months ago, oh, no, look at all these jobs we created, Bidenomics, it's great. Well, now they're two months later coming back and saying, those numbers weren't quite accurate. Um, we need to lower that number by 45,000 jobs. I mean, what is that, 32%? Okay, well, what about November? I'm sure last month when they, thank you, Metal Sear for that as well, man, and the moderators. <laughs> Ron doesn't cuss. Ron only cusses when he's not on on the on the live streams. Trust me. Anyway, what about November? Huh? Yeah. Okay. November. They revised those numbers down by twenty six thousand jobs from one hundred and ninety nine to one hundred and seventy three thousand jobs. This means that ten of the eleven last of the ten of the most recent eleven jobs reports have been revised substantially lower. So why would we believe every month it's the same thing? And I swear I'll only rant about this for 15 more seconds. Oh, look at these great jobs numbers. Oh, and by the way, what we told you last month was wrong. The economy didn't create as many jobs. And the month before that, well, that was wrong too. But don't worry, don't look back. Live in the present moment. Live in the present. And right now we're telling you that everything's great. Okay? Vote for Joe. Vote for whoever. It's not just the Democrats. The Republicans. This is not a political show. But right now we have a Democratic president who's reporting inaccurate numbers month after month after month after month. And you know what? Here's the big deal. Here's why it's a new day for you, silver and gold investors, and me too. And that bear, he's perking up, right? The gold bear, Smitty, the silver bear, $85 silver, everybody's perking up because you know why, right? Gold and silver, two of the oldest markets in the world. Thank you, Thomas, for that super chat. Thank you. The oldest markets in the world, right? I think somebody emailed me and yelled at me and said, you're wrong. They're not the oldest markets. The fish market is the, okay, well, besides the fish market, <laughs> uh, gold and silver are two of the oldest markets in the world. What comes with age wisdom? Are these markets calling monkey? Is that the big deal today? Are they saying BS? See, I didn't cuss. BS. Yes. Right? Because today, guys, with this unbelievable beat, right, which should, which should have killed the silver price, murdered the gold price. Gold should be down $50 an ounce. Silver should be down $1.13 per ounce. It's not. No, no. Actually, they went down immediately, but for some reason they came back. Now, I don't know. When I came on, gold was up 15. It doesn't, at this point, at this point, what we can what we can take solace in is that the mark the winds have changed, the tide has shifted. We talked about this 
three weeks, four weeks, five weeks ago. But I'm telling you guys, it has changed. We are in a new environment when the absolute worst news that you could ever expect, right? Okay, if yesterday, let me just tell you this. If yesterday, right, we could go into the future and I told you, hey, these jobs numbers are going to be an incredible beat. We would have bet the farm on gold and silver being down. Anybody on Wall Street would have bet the farm. You got to feel sorry for the tr gold and silver future trader who this morning had a bet that the silver and gold price were going to go down today. And that news came out and it went down and then boom, it went right back up. This is a big, 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 big day. The numbers are what they are. The numbers are not trustworthy. And it's the biggest deal that we could have ever asked for with silver. It's part of what happened today. Let's take a step. Do you think, let me ask you, do you think that these numbers today Hello, everybody. Man, you guys have been super crazy generous with Super Chats. Thank you. goes a long, long way to support the family. But do you think, let me ask you a question. Do you think that maybe, just maybe, just maybe, when, and we're going to be paying more and more attention to this, and we're going to be calling it out because we have courage, and this is the United States of America, and we have a First Amendment right, freedom of speech. I think that's the First Amendment. Anyway, freedom of speech, and if it is the First Amendment, they put it first for a reason. We can call out what we think is not true, and I believe, do you believe, that what happened today, this incredible Bidenomic economic miracle, it's working, blah, blah, blah. It's part of the election year. It's 2024, guys. We have an election in this country in 11 months. All right, 10 months. I don't know, 10, 11, 10 and a half months. Anyway, nonetheless, we're going to see shenanigans like never before. We're going to see social, Don the Brain had a way he described it, just liquidity, everything. And this, these numbers are part of what we can expect to see. Mirage, okay? Absolute mirage. Thank you, CoinShop. Chris, for reminding me it's time for the bell. This is the bell warning. Three seconds. If you don't like bells, mute your earbuds or however you listen to me, your surround sound. Pay attention. <laughs> yes, it is, right? It's part of the election year mirage. Look, remember, we don't have to look any further than what happened before the midterm elections when Joe went to Saudi Arabia to beg them to pump oil so we could get gas prices down. That's a whole different subject. The Saudis told him to, uh, pardon the pun, pound sand uh, and go home, and they're going to do what they want, and we know how the world has changed. We're going to talk about Saudi Arabia a little bit later. Big news there. Big news out of China. Big news. Today's a big news day, period, okay? But let's talk about Turkey. Turkey, you turkey. How does 65% return in silver price sound to you what are we at today twenty four dollars that would be about i don't know what fifteen dollars that'd be forty dollars per ounce silver wouldn't it we're gonna talk about that have a sip of coffee thank you guys for being here while i'm sipping coffee it would really warm my heart if i saw people type the number eight 8888 eight, eight, because the moderators are great. We got a great moderator team. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm participating. I wish you would too. Type 8 to say thank you to all those moderators. Coin Shop Chris, Jim M, Craig, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, Annie Oakley, and of course the one and only Sassy Silver, who may not be here today because you know people have lives. Okay? All right, hold on. Oh boy, and I got something I'm going to show you later in the video that's going to demonstrate visually what happened today and why this is a big, 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 big deal. Hold on. Okay. Oh boy, we get all this stuff together. Right, can you guys hear me? Can you see me? I can see you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Um, uh, oh, okay. So silver price in the United States in 2023 was flat like a pancake. We've already talked about, and I'm not going to pull it out, but we were in a wedge. The price getting compressed. Okay. Today's the start, by the way, of it breaking out of that wedge again, actually bouncing off the top of the wedge. We're going to have, we're going to have $40 silver by the end of the year. Don't, 
make any financial decisions based upon that, but I believe we absolutely will have $40 silver by the end of the year. If you want to get your hands on some silver before the price goes up, potentially, or before there's a shortage, potentially, okay? Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but if you think that that might be the case and you want to get the best price around, go to Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com, online bullion dealer. I trust them. I know I'm getting the best price. I know they've got great selection. They check all the boxes for me. That doesn't mean that 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 you don't need to do your own work and your own due diligence. I highly recommend that, right? Compare their prices. Read about what people say about them. I can tell you, I worked with them before they sponsored Ron's Basement, okay? Uh, and I can tell you that since they've sponsored Ron's Basement, I can look you in the eye and tell you I've had nobody ever send me anything but positive remarks about Pimbex. That's a fact, okay? But you need to find out for yourself. Next time you're shopping for bullion online, <clears throat> if I can speak, I love to spell it. P-I-M-B-E-X. And I love to say it even more. Pimbex.com. Pimbex. Okay? You'll get more metal for your money. Now, let's talk about turkey. 65%. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, yeah. Silver was flat in the United States. In Turkey last year, according to my calculations, it went up like 55%, but why, okay? What are we gonna learn about silver when we look at what happened in Turkey? Here we go. Let's read this. Turkey is an advanced economy, by the way. I know we're Americans, we think nothing but us are advanced, but that's the wrong one. All right, here we go, from CNBC. Thank you, STP Trader, for that super chat. Wow, you guys are being super generous. Let's talk about Turkey. Turkish inflation climbs to nearly 65% with more rises expected. What does this have to do with silver? Everything. Bear with me. Inflation in Turkey was up 64.8%. They rounded up year on year. So in December. Uh, so from December of last year to December of this year, if you lived in Turkey, everything you bought cost about two thirds more, 64.8%. All right. The Turkish Central Bank uh, has raised rates from 8.5% to 42.5%. 42.5%. Wow. In the second half of 2023. Okay. What does this have to do with silver, Ron? What does this have to do with silver? As inflation uh, blah, 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 eases in most of the world's major economies, eye-watering price rises continue to be the case in Turkey. Inflation in Turkey rose 64 percent on an why do they repeat themselves they're like me they're repeaters in december an acceleration from 62 percent in november that was slightly below expectations of 65.1 percent all right hold on here turkish inflation hit a peak of 85 percent in october of 2022 inflation why financial mismanagement why monetary mismanagement? Why political corruption, right? Hmm, sound familiar, basement dwellers? Do we know a country in the world that checks those three boxes? I don't know. You can decide that for yourself, okay? Now, what does that have to do with the price of silver? Everything. Because look, here's our turkey chart, okay? That's the price of silver in Turkey. Now, this chart starts, it's 10 years, 2013, 43 Turkish lira, okay? They're over there. 10 years later, it's like, what, 724 Turkish lira. That's not the important part. Hold on here. Can you see that? You can see that. Okay, because if you look at this little part over here, that's the last year. Does silver protect people from inflation. Well, I did some math and some statistical work. In January of last year, uh, silver was 450 Turkish lira. December 31st, it was around, let's say, 720-ish range in there, okay? Almost a 60% increase. So while inflation went up during that year by 65%, guess what? Guess what else happened? 
the price of silver went up by pretty much the same amount. People in Turkey who on January, if you're if you're a Turkey person, right? I don't know. Do we have anybody here from Turkey? We get people from all over the world, wherever you are. Thank you for joining me. Please give this a thumbs up before I forget. I haven't even begged you yet. It's down there somewhere. You may have to minimize my screen. Thumbs up really help. It's like a virtual hug. It's free. It feels good. Well, let's see if we can get to 200 thumbs up. Wouldn't that be awesome? I might have a cowbell I'll ring for you at that point. Okay, and don't forget to subscribe. We want you. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. or Mrs. We want you to come back to the basement. Okay? We want you to feel welcome here. If you enjoy talking about silver and gold, you're in the right place. You're in the Mr. Rogers neighborhood for silver and gold enthusiasts. You are a basement dweller right now. Congratulations. You made it. You get the badge. Boom. Okay. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Free. Turn on the bell notification. Free. Everything's free. Super chats are always super appreciated. And you guys have been super generous. I recognize that and I appreciate it. So does Susie. So do my daughters who are always begging me for money for something. Nonetheless, if you're in Turkey, Turkey, <laughs> did your parents call you a turkey? My mom and dad were wonderful people. Still are. When I was a little boy, my mom would always call me a turkey. Anyway, if you're a turkey, Turkish person in Turkey on January 1st, of 2023 okay and you have your money in turkish lira which is like the u.s dollar hmm yeah same thing right paper money you got paper lira turkish lira you got paper dollars during the next 12 months right from january to december of 2023 you watched prices go up by darn near two-thirds that means um that uh, that little pack of hamburger you would buy at the Turkish market for $10 on January 1st, that means by the end of December, it costs 16 Turkish lira, okay? Did I say dollars to start out with? Anyway, $16.60, whatever. Okay, if you held your money in paper Turkish lira, right, you'd lost, what, 60% of your value, 50%, whatever it is. But if you were in Turkey on January 1st and you held silver... Guess what, right? In, in terms of silver price, silver cost, you were protected. Uh, it, it works. Okay, I know. Let's talk about something here. I know we go through these little periods. The United States and the dollar, it's the smoke and mirror, fun house, unicorn, whatever. They manipulate. We've been through a period where we had high inflation and people are like, well, silver didn't go up. Silver, blah, blah, blah. Look. There can be little periods of time where you can you can cherry pick and say, well, inflation was high, but silver didn't go up. But you go out, <clears throat> excuse me, over any longer period of time, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 200 years, 2,000 years, silver and gold will protect your buying power. This, my friends, is a three ounce silver heart. I bought that for the love of my life, Susie, on Valentine's Day, <clears throat> maybe last year. Valentine's Day is coming up. We're going to have another big giveaway. Pinbex is donating something very interesting. And our good friend JB also has some products. We're going to have that as well. I'll put out a video for that next week on Wednesday. Be looking, right? You have to watch the video, comment on the video. But uh, nonetheless, where was I? Oh, yeah. This, this is a battery. This is a battery. A value battery. This is from Coin Shop Chris. Those are my two favorite pieces of silver, right? Coin Shop Chris and Susie. Anyway, this stores value. It's not. It, it doesn't store energy. You know, we know all the electrical stuff about silver and reflective and blah, blah, blah. Great stuff. But it's a value battery. Uh, the, the bald guy, bald guy money. I think he invented that, and I've kind of stolen it from him. But nonetheless, <laughs> or we talked about it during a video. And we're going to have another video coming out as well. If you're in Turkey and everything goes up 65% in price, would you rather have your money in paper or silver? Oh, and by the way, the silver went up almost 65% in value during that period as well. Silver protected the Turkish citizens. The United States economy, I don't know why I have these notes. I put all these notes together, right? Look at, highlight it and all that. I don't know why I put this on here, but I'm going to read it to you. I'll read you what I wrote. 
<clears throat> the United States economy has been absolutely addicted to cheap, easy money for decades. Now, what we're going through, because we are heading into some scary waters in the United States. Now, it's like a drug addict who's had their drug removed, right? The United States, we are just right now going into withdrawal. Cold turkey, right? One of the themes today, turkey. It is not uh, interesting. Congratulations, United States. I don't know if you guys knew this, but we have now officially right? Acquired 34 trillion. Yes, trillion. A trillion is a million times a million. Don the Brain gave us that one. $34 trillion in debt. It's not tenable. It doesn't work, okay? Uh, Saudi Arabia came out with official announcement that they've joined the BRICS. All right? Iran, official announcement. They joined the BRICS, Okay. The world is, quickly we'll go over this, basement dwellers, the world is, just in case you thought this might have changed from yesterday, the world is changing like never before. Do you believe that the world is changing? That's the C word for today. If you do, I'm going to participate. I'd like it if you participated as well. Type C. But we got even more uh, information that came out regarding why this world is changing like never before in a scary, scary way. Because we know we have war in Europe. We have war in the Middle East. We have the Red Sea essentially shut down, which like 15% of the world economy goes through there. While coincidentally, the Panama Canal is essentially shut down because of drought conditions. The world, and, and then I'm seeing, I was listening on Ar Arcadia Economics, I listened to a little bit of that guy, what's his name, Jim Willie, the Long Beach port out in California, he had pictures, it's empty. Like, things are getting very, very interesting, very crazy in our world, right? Now, if you don't want to hold physical metal in your hand, let's say you like precious metal mining stocks, we're going to thank our other sponsor, Fortuna Silver Mines. They're traded on the New York Stock Exchange and the Toronto Stock Exchange. It's a stock that I've owned for years prior to them uh, sponsoring my channel. So thank you to Fortuna for sponsoring Ron's Basement. They make this broadcast, the videos, possible. Okay. If you want to learn more about Fortuna, you can go to their website, fortunasilver.com. They've got a lot going on. One thing that I love about Fortuna is I have so much respect for their CEO, Jorge Ganoza. He's like a fifth generation miner from Peru, but Jorge has built this company over 20 years, right? Started with one mine. Now they've got like five producing mines all over the world. But what always has impressed me with Jorge is his ability to deliver on what he promises what they set out to do. There's all kinds of challenges faced in the mining sector. You know that. That's one of the big attributes we love about silver. We love about gold. It's hard to get silver out of the ground. It's, it's hard to get gold out of the ground. It's probably harder to get silver out of the ground. But nonetheless, and Fortuna does both, gold and silver. So they're diversified between the two metals, but they're also a global company now. Mines in West Africa, mines in Mexico, mine in uh, Peru, mine in Argentina. Check them out. It's a company I like. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just telling you. Uh, what I do, you make up your own mind for yourself, do your own due diligence, but thank you to Fortuna for sponsoring the basement. Now, let's move on. Okay, so war in Europe. War in, where else do we have war? We have so many wars going on. Oh yeah, the Middle East, all of which is a tragedy. We are not rooting for war to make silver and gold go up. I know you, okay? I know you, basement. We do not... Children are dying, okay? Like I have children. You may have children. You may have grandchildren. You know children. You were a child once. Kids don't deserve to die. We, don't, we aren't rooting for any of this war. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go off. Well, yeah, I am. I'm going to go off on a little something, a, something I love about silver and gold because I heard this said the other day and I never thought about it. When countries are tethered, when, comp when silver and gold, when, when they're used to back currencies, it, 
it uh, applies a discipline on the political leaders that makes it very difficult for them to just print money to go to war because they can't just print money. One of the things that 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 I don't think we talk about enough about a silver and gold backed monetary world system, right, or even in the United States or wherever, is that it ushers also ushers in periods of peace. Okay, and when the because you can't just print money to go to war. And on top of that, uh, with that monetary discipline, and you look at the United States, I talked with Rob Keats about this. I asked him, he's smart, okay? And he wrote a book and I said, and, he, and I, but, but I didn't even know this. When I asked him, I said, would you say that, that the most productive, the greatest years of the United States occurred when the United States was on the gold standard? And he said, Absolutely. He said, actually, there's a section in my book that talks about that. So anyway, I went off on a little tangent, but gold and silver are also peace and prosperity. P and P. We talk about M and M, but gold and silver offer the world peace. And that's what the BRICS countries and the BRICS plus countries are talking about. Like we want a, um, they don't want to have a, and I can't say the word, hegemony, hegemony. Hegemony, hegemony, whatever. They, like we don't, none of them. We don't want. We just want a more equitable uh, system, and we want peace and prosperity for the world. Right? Look, I'm an American. I love this country, and I believe. Um, I believe that the world can get through this conversion without needing to go uh, into more and more and more wars for our good, for our children's good, our grandchildren's good, our neighbor's good, our loved one's good, our friend's good. For the good of the world, let's hope that's the case. I digress. Let's talk about, though, let's talk about war, a third war, <coughs> or major scary situation, okay? Let me read this. Uh-oh, I lost my teleprompter. How could I do that? Huh? How could I do that? Oh, I'll ring the cowbell in just a second. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris. Coin Shop Chris is throwing, I have a smartwatch now. I get shocked. I get shocks from Coin Shop Chris. <laughs> Let me read this. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. This is from the BBC. The British broadcast, when they're not busy playing around with the gold price and the silver price at the LBMA, they're running the British Broadcast Network. Okay, what did President Xi of China, the second most powerful, second largest economy in the world, what did he say on New Year's Eve? He has a big New Year's Eve party, apparently. Hmm, interesting. Chinese President Xi Jinping, in his annual New Year's Eve address, reiterated his claim that Taiwan would, quote unquote, surely be reunified with China. Now, I heard somebody else say, just, I forget who it was just the other day. Oh, it was Guy Adami from CNBC. Uh, he said that it's basically known now that when G came and met with Biden out in San Francisco, remember they cleaned up all the poo-poo off the sidewalks and made San Francisco, everybody's like, oh, it's never been so clean, you know? Anyway, when G came and saw these clean, non-poop-filled sidewalks in, uh, in, in uh, San Francisco, apparently during that meeting, G told Biden, I don't know if Joe remembers this or not, but nonetheless, I digress, he told Biden that they were going to take back Taiwan, quote, quote, unquote, by any means necessary. But let's listen what G said more recently. He said they, they will surely be reunified, Taiwan and China. His message comes ahead of Taiwan's crucial January 13th elections. Oh, so we have elections in Taiwan that will determine the island's cross-strait policy for the next four years. He also struck a stronger tone than last year's message, where he spoke of Taiwan being part of the so last year, he said it was part of the same family. This year, he ratcheted it up to it being, uh, how did he say it again? Uh, surely we'll be reunified. What does this have to do with gold and silver? Everything. This gets interesting. He also struck, okay, uh, China has ramped up military pressure on Taiwan ahead of the elections. Uh, China sees Taiwan the island of 23 million as a breakaway province that will eventually be under Beijing's control. 
Taiwan considers itself distinct from the Chinese mainland with its own constitution and democratically elected leaders. Okay, why is this a big deal? This is a big deal because Taiwan is a high-tech country. If China takes over Taiwan, what is it, microchips, whatever, but, but it's here's what will happen. It could create chaos in the United States tech sector. Yes, that tech sector, that same tech sector, that the top seven countries, uh, I missed a super chat and I got to ring the bell. Okay. I, that, all right. Let's, let me, let me, let's ring. Tech sector. <laughs> yes. Right. You, do you know the Magnificent Seven, the top big tech stocks make up like, it's unbelievable, right? The only reason the markets are up are because Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA, and three others are up. This could create chaos in the U.S. tech sector and the U.S. stock market and the U.S. economy if China makes bold moves to actually take over Taiwan and geopolitically, it could crash the economy, which would create unbelievable money printing, which would be good for gold and silver. It would create, you'd think the Ukraine war, which is a big deal. It is a big deal. You'd think the situation in the Middle East is a big deal. It's a, as big or bigger of a deal. China going after Taiwan is the big, 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 the world has gone crazy deal. Okay, so we need to keep a very, very close eye on that. I'm going to ring the cowbell uh, for 200 thumbs up. Thank you, guys. That's the cowbell warning. Mute your ears. Uh-oh. Did it freeze? Is Jake here? Is Jake? Hello, Jim M. I'll ring it for Jimmy. And I'll ring it for Jake. All right. That's what's going on. Coin Shop Chris tells me I missed a super chat. Is it from Zachary? Appreciate your info from your team, Ron. God bless you and your beautiful familia. Thank you, Zachary. Thank you guys for all these generous super chats today. Um, oh, this is crazy. Are you ready to get your mind blown? We got more. This, I'm sorry. Uh, and I want to make this recommendation. If you're listening to this, these go on for a while. But we love being together, and I love to be with you guys, and I get so much energy, so these go a long time. Don't forget, you can always press that little gear wheel and like do the playback speed at like 1.5, 1.75, 1.25. It speeds everything up. <laughs> and a lot of times, I don't think I'd speak all that fast. But this is crazy. So we got the bricks. We aren't going to go on a big bricks trip, okay? But you guys know what's going on with the bricks. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. You have a sip of coffee. Don't forget, give us some thumbs up. And then I'm going to blow your mind with some information about the bricks. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you. And today is the day I'm afraid to look at the gold. You know what? Let's do a quick update on the gold price and the silver price. Even if even if gold, if I'm happy if today gold ends even. Okay, but let's just look. Up seven dollars. Okay. So um, you know, it had been higher, but it's two two thousand fifty per ounce. We'll still be happy. What about silver? Silver, silver, silver. Silver's up 28 cents, right? Uh, this is 1044 a.m. on Friday, January 5th, 2023. Are you ready to have your mind blown about the BRICS? Because the BRICS are moving. Remember, Iran just came out, all right? Okay, you got BRICS. I'm going to tell you this. I'll say, I'm only going to say this 365 more times over the next year. You got BRICS, and now you have BRICS Plus. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. But they added five countries. And one of the viewers, and I forget who, I'm sorry, I can't give you credit, said it's now, it's now, it's BRICS, I-C-U, I-S-E-E-U, which stands for Iran, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates. This is crazy. And we have Iran, who just got into BRICS, who came out with this big announcement 
that what we want is a unified BRICS currency. And we know that that could also mean gold-backed currency. Yeah, don't forget about that. Remember back in the summer, right? It still can happen, a gold-backed currency, because gold, none of those countries wants to rule the world. China doesn't. China has said outright, we don't want to rule the world. We don't want to be the new superpower, right? We're cool with, we built a wall around our country. We're okay. <laughs> Staying, we don't want to rule, right? Russia doesn't want to rule the world. None of these countries want to rule the world, right? They want, they don't, I, and Susie gets mad at me because I say it wrong, but for the last 50 years, the United States has been the hegemony, hegemony, however you pronounce that darn world, the world superpower, okay? What, what, and I heard, uh, the, the, I heard this woman say this the other day, very intelligent woman who worked for the New, New, New York, New York, New York, New York Fed, okay? She said gold can be the world hegemony, right? It's the universal, right? It can usher in discipline, all that, okay? But nonetheless, should we be worried about the BRICS? Should you be worried? They don't want you to be worried yet because when they want you to be worried about bricks, right, they're going to put it on the Children's News Network. They're going to put it on MSBS. They're going to put it on Fox News. They're going to put it on your evening news. That's when you know they want you to be worried about the bricks because now I got news for you. Okay, it's the middle of January, but let's say it's summertime and you go to your neighborhood swimming pool like I do. If you want to get away from somebody you don't want to talk to, start talking about gold and silver. If that doesn't work, talk about the petrodollar, okay? Then they really look at you like you're crazy. If that doesn't work, talk to them about bricks. You say, you know what bricks is? And they'll look at you like, well, yeah, that house over there has bricks on it, Ron. <laughs> you know, and no, people don't know. Ask, ask your average person, your coworker, you should be working, not listening to Ron's basement. Well, I don't know. Maybe, you know, right? I know the guys at Goldman Sachs watch on the trading desk, so yeah, maybe they learn something. But nonetheless, ask one of your coworkers when you go out to Qdoba, wherever you're going to go for lunch today. Say, what do you think about bricks? Well, I don't know about br brick, but people don't know. But should we be? I'm not. Well, I don't feel. Do you feel scared by the bricks? I feel um, like it's just very, very interesting how the world is changing right now. But why, why should we look at this chart? This shows the share of global, and then it breaks it down. GDP, population, oil production, exports of goods. Let's see if I can get this up there so you can see it. Hi. Hi, basement dweller. Okay. So on the top, that's the share of global GDP. Now, 30% of the global GDP is represented by BRICS. What about population? Oh, only almost half. 46% of the world's population is now controlled by the BRICS nations. What about oil? Oil? Oil is the lifeblood. It's like the blood in your body, right? You're watching. You're alive. <laughs> That's a miracle. We've covered that already. You got blood going all through your body. It keeps you alive. It delivers oxygen. I never really was into science, but nonetheless, I know like blood, oil is like, like the lifeblood of your body. It's the lifeblood of the world economy. It's just not what you put in your uh, Honda Accord, right? No, guys, no. Blood, uh, uh, oil is everything. It's everywhere. Here, you know, uh, uh, anything I pick up, this guy, what's his name? Don Garlitz, I guarantee you he's made out of oil. Everybody say hi to Don, Big Daddy Don Garlitz. Yeah, anyway, everything, your car, your car seat, your sofa, your plastic, everything is made out of oil. And it's also energy. It powers everything, okay? It's a big deal. How much oil? They control, I'm sorry, they control 46% of the world's, world's oil and 25% of the world's exports. That's the reality, okay? That's the reality. Very interesting. Did I miss another super chat? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Thank you, Zachary. Am I in trouble, CoinShop, Chris? Hold on. Hold on, guys. I don't know if you can hear me right now. Can you hear me? 
We had 400 people here. Can we get to 300 thumbs up today? Come on, man. If you get a chance, if you can hear me. Oh, no, I don't want that. Bear with me. All right. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Metal Seer. Hegemony. 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 Thank you. I know I've, I've, there's a bit of a... Um, I, I'm, well, anyway, Susie got mad at me last night, called me at work. She was editing a video I'd made a couple days ago. She's like, you said something that starts with H. I don't know what you're trying to say, and I don't know. I do the best I can. Putin, Putin, war, war, whatever. You know, Jim Rickards. Jim Rickards. I, I, don't quote me. He worked for some of the big government agencies. I think he worked with Reagan. Like he can, I mean, this guy is in the know. He's an, kind of an insider. Okay. Here's a couple things Rickards said that you and me can look forward to in 2024. The election is going to be absolutely crazy town. The country is going to go absolutely crazy town. We'll see if that happens or not. Biden right now has a 37% approval rating. That's just a fact. This is not a political show. Okay. Then that he thinks that it's likely that Biden won't even be on the ticket in November. Who's it going to be? Gavin Newsom, that guy from California. Yeah. So I heard somebody talking about, I'm not saying this, but I heard some analysts talking about Gavin Newsom the other day, and they were equating him with a used car salesman that he, anyway, I don't know. I'm not saying that. I don't really know the guy. I don't really know a whole lot about him. But anyway, we could have President Newsom. <laughs> uh, China, USA, Japan, recession, that we're going to absolutely have a recession in 2024. Germany, the world's fourth largest economy, is already in a recession. Germany, the world's fourth largest economy, with a housing shortage, right, uh, has a real estate market that is crashing right now. Could that be? They were, they've kind of been ahead of us, those Germans. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Russia essentially wins the uh, war that's in conflict are in Ukraine and Zelensky is gone. I, I, I've been saying that for a year uh, that we could see $150 oil if the Middle East situation escalates and it's not getting any better over there. Um, we could see a 30% decline in the stock market. Okay, now that could that could knock the knees out of the precious metal mining stocks as well, unless we have a situation like the 1970s, where gold and silver mining stocks actually did quite well while the general markets were in the the toilet. Okay, uh, if we have you we could, on a on a recession alone, we could have a 30% decline in the United States stock market. If the Ukraine or Middle East situation escalates, it could be more could be like a 50% decline. Um, he pointed out that 1974 recession in the United States, we had a Dow that fell 45%. Wow. So is today the big day? Huh? Is today the day where things really change? I'm, I'll tell you, when it comes to silver and gold, which is what we really love to talk about on this channel, okay? I, I, we've been talking about it, haven't we, now for like the last couple months. I said the, the, the paradigm has shifted. The environment, the winds have shifted. Guys, yeah, it's been 10 days since we talked about this, so I can repeat this one. The last two or three years, if you own gold and silver, do you own silver? Do you own gold? If you do, right? I own S. I own precious metal mining stocks. Type it in, what you own, SG. But if either one, either one, man, you have been beaten. You've been abused over the last two to three years. On many levels, it's been very difficult to own the metals in the mining stocks. Now, something changed six weeks, eight weeks ago. Uh, we talked about it, okay? I think today gives me, okay, this is just my opinion, even more confidence that we've turned the corner early here in 2024. That 2024 could, could has the makings, all right? <laughs> I love we go down to Alabama every year and they people in the south say fixin'. I think the gold and silver price is fixin' to do really well 
in 2024. Has the makings, has the macro environment. We can go from saying has the fixins to being fancy and saying, oh, macro environment has turned favorable for the precious metals prices. Okay. As we move into the new year, uh, we could see the wind in our sails because you know what you've been through? I got news for you. I hate, I, do you like to run? I'm nothing against people who like to run. I hate running. I was a division one scholarship athlete, soccer. They made us run all the time. I hated running. I never liked running, right? But if you go out and try to run and you're, and it's a windy day, and I was in Chicago at the time in the city at uh, DePaul University. Anyway, the wind was always, you know, if the wind was blowing and you're trying to run, it's like, oh my, that's what you've been doing for the last two or three years. But you kept running. Right? You didn't give up. You didn't sit down on a park bench and say, I'm done with this. I can't run anymore. No. You knew the fundamental reason why you were running and why you were running into that wind. And that wind has likely shifted. Okay? I felt it two or three, two months ago, six weeks ago. Today, what's happened so far, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe by the end of the day, we get gold down $25. You know, none of it's nonetheless... Just the, just the reaction this morning indicates to me that we are fixing to have a good year for the silver and gold price next year. Can we, ah, I, but it, speaking of never giving up, I'd really like for us to get the basement dwellers 300 thumbs up. I can see it on my screen right there. We're at 270. Can we get 30 thumbs up here in the next four minutes so I can do that right there? There's a prize right? The old gong. When I hit the gong, it like rings for like thir three, four seconds afterwards. Please, I need some, we need some thumbs up. We need to get this out. Thank you guys. Thank you, moderators. Let's get the thumbs up. Let's talk about, let's talk about, hold on. Here, you know what we can talk about? This. That's probably the last six months of notes that I've put together for presentations to you guys. Let's have some fun. Let's go back about three months and see what the hot news of the day was. Here. This is uh, from September of 2023, okay? Gold and silver ETF outflows. Oh, that's a great subject. <laughs> oh boy. When that pile falls over, it's not good. We got 280. Come on, we got 280. Can we get 285, 285? We're on our way to 300 thumbs up. Okay. Gold and silver, ETF outflows. This is great. <laughs> this is a great subject for us to talk about silver and gold investors because, yes, remember I just told you you were running into the wind for the last two or three years? Part of that wind was outflows. Investors last year. Man, guys, hard to say last year, but last year money came out right from an investor, individual, uh, even institutional investor. Money came out of the silver and gold ETFs. Sorry, but it's the reality of the situation. Investment in silver was down last year. I think I read 22%. So why is that good news? <laughs> why is that? Think about this. Think about this. Because despite the fact that people were pulling money out of the SLV ETF and the GLD ETF and the other, maybe the PSLV, right? People were selling at the coin shops. We talked to Coin Shop Crisp. Now, more people were selling, especially later last year. Despite that, today we're sitting, last I checked, with a gold price right around $2,050 per ounce with a silver price, right? 23, 24 silver didn't get. So why is that good news? Here's why. All right. When it's raining, it feels like it's always going to rain. When people are selling, right? It feels like people are always going to sell. But I got, I'm, I, I, I got good news for you and, and you, <laughs> you better like it because the reality is that goes up and down, up and down, people will come back into silver and gold. It will happen, right? We've had some people, some basement dwellers that maybe have given up, right? You didn't give up. I didn't give up. But we have seen basement dwellers who have given up. 
I, they'll come back. They'll come back to the basement. <laughs> Unfortunately, people a lot. You're the smart ones. You're here when uh, when the sentiment is low, right? Okay. All right. We got 290. Can we get 300 thumbs up? And I will ring the golden gong for you. You know what? I'll ring it at one extra time today because that's a good day. When those people come back, huh? Think about that. If gold and silver were able to do what they did last year in the face of investors leaving us, breaking our little hearts, <laughs> they broke our heart. How could they do that to us? Rick Rule talks about it all the time. Rick Rule says, if you go to the grocery store, when you go to the grocery store, do you like tuna fish? I'm, I'm not really. But anyway, you go to the grocery store and you're, you, you buy tuna fish every week and you go and they've got a deal going, right? Like 30% off tuna fish. You're probably going to buy a couple extra cans of tuna fish. Silver investors are the exact opposite. There's a 30% off sale. And what do they do? They sell their silver. But they go to the grocery store. Here's what a silver investor would do if silver were tuna. They go to the grocery store and they say, oh, look, they raised the price. Joe Biden's economic miracle must be working because tuna fish went up 35% in price. I better buy a lot more before it goes up even higher. That's how silver, not you, <laughs> not me, you dollar cost average. You buy when the price is down. I know you, but there's this whole other group of people that only join us in the good times. And really, it's bad times for them because they're buying when the price is up and up and up. And then there's the Costco people, okay? Right? That new group of people that, that, uh, that are waking up to silver and gold. And then... There's even a new wave of people. They're the people that stayed on the Titanic a little bit too long. All the lifeboats are gone, right? They're the ones who are going to say, I need to get some silver because I watched this guy named Ron from Ron's basement. <laughs> Poor person. Torture yourself. Nonetheless, you know, you know, the average, not the average. I'm not putting anybody down, okay? But just the, the people out there that are right now, you say, the people that if you offered them, um, uh, if you offered them either a Snickers candy bar or a one ounce American Silver Eagle would say, I want the candy bar. Or if they're walking down the street with an ice cream cone, you say, I'll give you this one ounce American Silver Eagle for that ice cream cone. They're like, what are you crazy? I'm not taking that deal, right? When those people join us, that's when it gets real crazy. We need three more. Can we get 300 thumbs up, guys? It looks like this. It looks like my finger. You just press it. It's kind of fun. We try to get to 300 on every live stream. We can do it today. That will be the fun thing. What else was happening on September 19th, okay? Things can change overnight. That's the other exciting thing about silver and gold, and especially the precious metal mining stocks. They can change like lightning. I don't know how long you've been around. I'm 53 years old. I don't know how old you are, but I was holding precious metal mining stocks back in 2016. I remember, gosh, my daughters were four. We They were in dance class. We were at the Maryland Heights uh, Community Center. They were doing a ballet. We got 300 thumbs up. I'm going to tell you the story first. We're doing ballet, and I went outside uh, to get some fresh air because I can only stand so much dance class, if you know what I mean. And I pulled out my phone, and I was I looked, and I looked, and some. I remember I owned Hecla Mining at the time, and some other small. I think I owned First Mining. These stocks were up like forty percent in the matter of like a day. So, guys, it can change overnight. It can change very, very quickly. We got three hundred thumbs up. Let's ring the gong. Now, I want you to listen. Oop, that was a little ring. That doesn't count. I'm going to ring it four times. But after you hit the gong, it continues to ring. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like a monkey. Last one. For you. Yes, you. Still ringing. Still ringing. All right, I think it's done now. 
Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of the basement. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you to Susie. Okay, guys, we got a great community of people. And, you know, it is absolutely not possible without you and your support. Thank you for the overwhelming super chats today. Um, I don't know what to say except thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, everybody that helps make this channel possible, but that does include you, right? Wherever you are in the world, in your car, in your bed, in your basement, right? This is what makes it possible. So thank you, and uh, I'll see you sometime tomorrow. Bye-bye.